me get a. <clears throat> I've got to grab the uh, Discord link. this weird okay I may just go to, <laughs> I'm just gonna go to my YouTube channel on uh, <clears throat> here let's see on YouTube it'll say hey Tom's live awesome um, <clears throat> and then uh, hey there I am oh wait why is it called let's talk about soloing Oh, that's last. Yes. Okay. So am I not live? Oh, I am live. Here we go. Okay. Share. Where's Twitter? Oh, it's right there. I forget they call it X now. I'm going to share it to my Twitter. See if anybody, it, if that helps any, you know, numbers at all. Uh, I'll delete that tweet once I'm no longer live. Uh, do we have anybody? Oh, we have ten. Okay, cool. Oh, hey, I see you here, Sam. Good morning. I'm Bob. Good to see you. Thanks for being uh, an admin for me. I have a lot of guitars out behind me. <laughs> I was. I was working on a session last night. Good morning, Holly. I was working on a session last night, yesterday, yeah, afternoon. Um, and uh, it was kind of one of those things where it was kind of a test to see what sound um, the composer wanted to go with. Uh, so we were, I was doing a bunch of different guitars with a bunch of different uh, picks and things like that to try to try to find the sonic. You know, it'll, he sent me these melodies, and then he said, can you play them, and some chord stuff too. Can you play them uh, with the different instrument, and then I'll pick out what we're going to use in the main thing. So, uh, the main thing being, I think a game, but I'm not sure. Uh, could be a movie. He does both. So, um, we're going to keep talking about soloing. Uh, somebody asked me uh, on uh, my, I think, Soloing 101, and... I should do more videos on that. I don't even remember how many I did total um, on that. Let me look real quick. The the thing about the, the, the question was really good, and it's it's a question I hear a lot, and it's something I talk about a lot, which is how do you make scales into music? It's one thing to to um, to you know to learn a bunch of scales, but that doesn't necessarily like I'm always saying, okay, soloing 101, I've done two of those uh pen, five pentatonic scales and the box shapes yeah so i'm not really being um two and when did i did i i've talked about threepers but um okay three per no okay so I, I've talked about th my three per scales, and I've I've got a bunch of old videos up there. Uh, go man, they go back to 2012, so they're 12 years old. Um, and that might be the next thing. So I talked about pentatonic shapes, I guess, in the one in the solo in 101, and then I talked about box shapes, which is which is exactly what George Harrison used when he soloed over um, "Let It Be." If you watched last week's video. Uh, you'll notice I had to chop out a bit of it. I got a copyright infringement for the for the piano progression. Fortunately, it was only when I was sitting there and I was just playing it without playing over it, and I was playing it for you so you could practice soloing. But now you have, if you go to the Discord, and it's linked there, if you go to the Discord, there's, what did it, was it 10 minutes long? Did I get 10 minutes on that? Uh, a jam track of the, basically this, but I changed the... Um, change the piano a little bit hopefully it'll make you know I, mean, I did God. something like 
that. Um, but basically, I, I change it. Now, I, seriously, there is no right to copyright a four chord progression, especially one, five, six, four progression, okay? And if you're wondering why I called it that, one, it, we're in the key of C, and if you look down right here, you can see the C scale, and the chord built on the C note is the one chord, the chord built on the D note is the two chord, the chord built on the three, the third note, E there, that's the three chord in the key of C. Uh, this is true of any key, but it wouldn't be E. It would E is the three of C, so that would be the three chord. F would be the four chord, G would be the five chord, A would be the six chord. So basically what I was saying, I was, I was doing a one C chord to a five, which is G, to a six, which is the A chord, but it's actually ultimately ends up being an A minor chord in the key of C, and the four chord, which is F. And so when somebody breaks things down, that's called the Nashville numbering system. It actually predates by a hundred years at least the origin of the city of Nashville. Um, uh, we, in fact, probably goes back since they started talking about scales. Um, we would do something called figured bass in college, which was an analysis of, of music pieces. And we started out doing like hymns and you could look at the chords in a hymn and you could go that's the one chord oh this is the first inversion one chord okay this is the second inversion five chord this is the six chord things like that this is the five of the five of the five of whatever you know we talked about that kind of stuff um and uh the, the, those, that kind of numbering system existed you know centuries ago uh it's a very old practice um but a lot of times the, re the reason nashville kind of does the numbering system for charts oftentimes uh, so you go to the studio, I've never been to Nashville, so I don't know, but I've seen a lot of videos on it and I have friends that live there and stuff. But basically, the, the, they would take it to numbers because it's a lot easier to transpose that way. So if you're just thinking the one chord, the five chord, the six chord, and the four chord, you can kind of think that in any key if you know your if you know your keys, which is one of the things you should try to do if you have any interest at all. Uh, you're going to need to do if you have any interest at all in being a professional musician. Um, but the reason they need to be able to change keys is because they don't know what key is going to be best for the singer. So a lot of times uh, they'll do like, I don't know, they <laughs> they may do uh, 12 songs an hour, you know, every five minutes, another song. Uh, there's this business that exists in Nashville. It actually exists out here too. I have friends that did it out here. I never, I, did I do one of those? No, I think I sat in on one of those sessions with Joe de Blasi. I think he brought me to one of those sessions. And it was literally, they. it was an hour session. I think everybody got a couple hundred bucks and they played on 12 songs. And they just had the charts in front of them. They were all numbered. Uh, they had singers in the booth and Basically, what it was was people that wanted to be songwriters, and they would send some this, you know, almost like it was in the back of a comic book or something, you know, you, you hey, be a songwriter, have your song professionally recorded, and so these uh, most people wouldn't send melodies or chords or anything; they would just send lyrics, and so these people would be in the booth and they would be singing these lyrics over some random chords. So they'd just be making up lyrics. I mean, making up melodies. The lyrics would be preordained. And um, uh, my friend, uh, Randy, who did a lot of those, he would he would have them on like uh, on his phone and stuff and would be playing them. And you'd be like, some of them were so funny, the lyrics. Um, and, you know, they pay, I don't know how much they pay. They probably pay too much. But actually, you know, if you're going to get, you know, five, six, seven musicians in a room and five or, you know, two or three singers in a room, I mean, you'll have guy singer and a girl singer, probably that's all, just two singers. Um, or maybe he would just do like a, a session for a guy singer and then the next section would be a girl singer or whatever. Uh, but it's a it's it's an actual real business. And people, I don't know, it's I don't know how much it is, to be honest. It could be $50, it could be $500. That's part, that's part of the reason why they try to do 12 in an hour or 10 in an hour or whatever. It's like five minutes, just jam on this song. It's, it's really not, none of the progressions are going to be jazzy. They're not going to be hard or anything like that. Uh, it may just say blues and C or whatever, and then they'll have a guy in there or what, the piano player will set it up or the bass player. May, usually a lot of times the bass player will be the one that'll be like, you know, <laughs> he 
he'll set it up so you know it's the end of the song. So it's a it's a, a real business. So that's why uh, that's how the Nashville system, the numbering system, got so utilized and so common was because they're just churning out. And this goes back to the '50s, churning out these song demos for people that thought they were songwriters or had lyrics. Um, I've had people hand me lyrics and say, "Oh, look, I wrote a song," and it's like, "Well, not really a song. It's some lyrics." Um, and in country. Lyric is kind of king, in my opinion. Lyric is the most important thing in country, which is why this thing is such more, so much more prevalent in, in country music than, say, pop or R&B or whatever, because uh, pop lyrics tend to be very monochromatic in the sense that they're almost always about love or something. And, but country songs can be about a lot of things. And uh, can, can, it's a turn of phrase that makes a good for a good country song oftentimes. The melodies are almost interchangeable. The, the tracks almost are interchangeable. I mean, one country song sounds pretty much like the, the next country song, in my opinion. Um, I've got probably some Nashville friends that would disagree with me, but I definitely know that there are artists that have a certain style, a certain je ne sais quoi with their band or whatever, or certain producers that have a certain way of getting certain sounds. Uh, but, you know, I hear stuff done in Nashville and it's, it's almost cookie cutter, so. Uh, I don't know. I'm in making I'm I'm making enemies right now. <laughs> hey, Dr. Kevin Elling. Wait, what? I know you. Um, Bill Keggy, Yes. A lot of people have Phil Keggy as their favorite guitar player. I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even sure who my. To be honest, I, George Benson. I can't wait for that George Benson interview with Rick Beato. Rick asks all the questions I would ask. That's the great thing about Rick. Okay. So, um, now, like I said, this chord progression is over here, right? The C, G, A minor, and F. So, just... Um, and so, we can do some different approaches. We can play over the key. We can play the key. We can play over the chords. Um, so we would change depending on the chord. Um, so you can use C scales because we're in the key of C. You could technically use A minor scales or A minor pentatonic scales because you're you know C is relative to A. You could, if you wanted to, you could play an F Lydian. There's nothing. There's nothing really keeping you from playing an F Lydian over this progression, except you're probably not going to want to sit on that F note over the C chord or the A minor chord. And the, even over the G, it's going to sound a little old-timey. The only time the F note's going to sound any good at all is over the F chord. And again, these are, you know, the the A minor G F is the is the chord progression for um, for at the, for the end of uh, Stairway to Heaven. And Jimmy uh, Jimmy Page, he'll he would he would acknowledge that F chord. Um, Beato did a video a few months ago about that, like the most amazing thing that Jimmy Page did. And it it works, 100% works. Um, one of the notes that's interesting, though, over the F chord is the E. So if he... That's actually a more interesting note to my ear, but is a little on the low side. So when you want, you know, the interesting notes, like, for example, here, um, everybody play this B note right here. The seventh fret, seventh fret of the first string. Okay, play that note over this chord. That's like, whoa, it's, it's like, whoa, that's a beautiful note. Yeah, that note works great. Now play this note, same note, but it's at the second fret of the fifth string. Okay, play that, ready? Okay, so it's much muddier. It doesn't really work. It's like, it's like I, I can do it actually. It's, it's, it creates this, this, uh, this major second, which is totally fine up here, but down there it gets a little muddy. So those interesting notes work better, more towards the middle and the upper part of the of the fretboard. Um, if you're gonna play a note low, like. If I was, then I probably would go to that F note I was playing over that Stairway to Heaven progression. Oh, is my guitar overdriven? It should be clean. 
I'll just turn down in here. Because I have the I have the EQ rolling off the bottom end. So the, yeah, so what Jimmy Jimmy Page did there is great, and he he does it elsewhere too. It's like um, and that that's that one is like I think I missed that one. I think when I was teaching that one, I'm sure I taught the E note, uh, but but Beato was right. He goes to F note there. Um, so kids that were probably playing along with it go, it's not quite right. Um, but that's, a, again, now at that point, that E note, as opposed to this E note, that one, that one's actually going to sound pretty cool over the F, you know, it's, it has that, that major seventh, that really pretty sound, not that you're going for pretty, but I do think that, uh, all music should be beautiful in its own way, even heavy metal and whatever, even opera. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to listen to opera. I started following this opera singer on Instagram. She's just adorable. She's a killer singer and she's just hilarious. And um, she tours all over Europe and stuff. And uh, I was like, oh, she, you know, she, the first thing that cracked me up is she was kind of moving before she started singing. I'm like, oh, she's funny. And then all of a sudden she starts singing and you're like, what the <laughs> it was like she could sing um so so yeah so um so we we can talk about like pentatonic scales and stuff like that and, like you know soloing and that's pentatonic basically what what it does is it it gives you a um a a group of notes to work with um and we did this last week um, where we would pick one note and just play it. We've done this before, play it over the chord progression to see how it sounds. Like an E note kind of works. In fact, that would be a, you know, a pretty good pop melody. You know, you could come up with a, a nice little pop melody just kind of revolving around one note. It 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 instantly creates charm. You know, you you want to when you're solo and you don't want to the goal isn't to show off unless you that's the type of music you're doing. The goal is to in my opinion, when I when I do a solo, I, I kind of want it. Okay, sometimes when I solo, I'm showing off. When I'm soloing on Apex Legends, uh, that the goal there is just to go insane usually. Uh, but if I'm being asked to solo on a pop song or a, a, a you know a pop track of some kind, um, I am going to. Um, uh, I am, I'm going to uh, try to do something that makes sense. And so it's a good starting point for, um, for, for you to learn the melody. Um, and if, if there's a melody, like that melody I just sang over the... Maybe that was it. So... So, um, the, 
so the, what I basically did was play that little pop melody that I kind of made up. Um, and, and that would make sense, although it's already been done in the song. But that's a good starting point. And again, like I said, a solo should, you know, it, it should be like this. The song's got this trajectory. And uh, the solo shouldn't be something that either stops the trajectory or makes the trajectory go down, go away from where its ultimate goal is. And so a solo should kind of support that and continue that trajectory. And that's, I, that's super ambivalent and ambiguous um, and kind of esoteric. I don't think there's a real, that, that doesn't really tell you a whole lot, except a lot of times when I do the right, when I do the right solo, I know it. it's like, I go, nope, that wasn't it. Nope, that wasn't it. That was it kind of thing. And it's kind of like, okay, this makes sense in the grand scheme of things. Um, and so, but main, the main context of what most of you will be soloing in will be if you're playing with another guitar player and you're just doing a jam. All right. And in that, in that scenario, Sure, you could probably use that as a uh, an excuse or an opportunity to practice your sc scales. And right there, I was just using the scale tones to kind of create a theme of some kind. Um, I've always said, you can take two notes, create an idea. Beethoven did it, dun, 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 and then he just milked it. <laughs> so, and then that's kind of what you do. You know, I could. The theme is as much a melodic theme as it is a rhythmic theme. It's also a rhythmic and bam, 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 bam kind of thing. And that's exactly what Beethoven did. He took, it was a melodic idea, a movement, dun, 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 you know, three notes high, lower, and then dun, 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 you know, he milked it. Um, and, and it's just called theme and variations. It's a very common, particularly for the Romantic era, it was a very, very common uh, tool to use in composition. Um, but it's very, it's very effective because what it does is you've got a, uh, you immediately establish some kind of melodic idea and now the listeners heard that idea and then when you play it again in a different way, it already sounds familiar. Um, and uh, auto automatically, you know, it's, it's rare that you like a song the first time you hear it. It's pretty rare. I always make the, um, I always make the argument that if Sgt. Pepper's were the Beatles' first record, you would have never heard of the Beatles uh, because it was, too, it was too weird and people would hear it once and they'd go, nope. But because it was a Beatles, the Beatles, they gave it a second listen, a third listen, a fifth listen, a 20th listen, and by then they understood what the Beatles were going for. But if, they, if that, was, that record was released in a vacuum, I don't think they would, you, we would, any of us, that would have been the only record they would have done. The label would have gone, what are you doing? <laughs> How much money did we spend on this? Um, you know, they had to build their reputation with kind of cheesy pop songs um, on the first couple, three records or so. And they just kind of grew out of that and we grew with them. And that's, you know, that's the, the you know, the, I think of Radiohead, their first record is pretty just kind of rock record, and the second record's pretty rocky, but it's it's starting to give you shades of where they're headed. Um, and uh, um, and then by, you know, the time that you get to OK Computer or uh, Amnesiac or something, you know, uh, they've got, they've created a following that's going to, that's really going to give their records a listen and get it. I think the first time I listened to um, uh, OK Computer, I got it. I, I really do. I remember sit, buying it and then like literally sitting in the car at the record store in, in the parking lot, listening to, the, to it with my son in the car, with Alex in the car. He was just a little kid and uh, he loves that record. Um, Sam says, favorite guitarist is an exercise in rhetoric. Uh, favorite acoustic guitarist, electric guitarist, favorite bands, guitarist, favorite guitarist as a person, whatever, influential, et cetera. Can't answer that. That's That may be true. Uh, uh, you maybe you don't have to pick one. 
I do, I, after having taught for 35 years, I probably had 50 students that came in and they only wanted to learn songs from one guitar player. <laughs> I had uh, I had one that he just thought that the um, Jethro Tull guitar player was the best guitar player in the history of the world and he wanted to learn every Jethro Tull song. So um, so there are people like that. Uh, and I, I, yeah, I agree. I can't, I couldn't really nail it, nail it down and it would change probably by the month, uh, let alone... Uh, you know, by the year or decade. Uh, but try, trying to think of the guitar player that got me into practicing really hard, I think was George Benson. Because that record, Breezing came out in 76. So I was 15. That's about the time I really started creating a routine, a practice regimen. Um, I think also, um, uh, who's the... You know, then the session players in L.A., like Lee Rittenauer and Larry Carlton. I really liked Larry Carlton a lot. But again, I, what they did eventually, I didn't, you know, like Larry Carlton's music after his first couple records, I didn't really like, eh. Once he started playing a Strat, I was kind of like, even though I'm a Strat guy, I was kind of like, well, I liked his music better before. Um, and then Lee Rittenauer started doing a lot of kind of smooth jazz stuff. And I liked his more kind of weird Zappa, Zappa-esque records um and then you know i i could say that the beatles but as far as guitar playing goes i don't know that any one beetle had an effect on me too much songwriting for sure so i don't know anyway uh but you're right it's not it's not an easy question to answer i was just come you know and i should have left out the besides me and that way you could all just said me <laughs> so okay so again the chord progression is down here all right. And um, if you look at the notes, I wrote out the notes in the triads. These are just, you know, the, uh, the piano is just playing triads. Oh, I got to click on this. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Breezen was kind of like one of those records that introduced me to jazz, even though it was like pretty bubblegum as far as jazz goes. From there, I got into bebop and hardcore jazz stuff and like Miles and uh, Coltrane and, and Charlie Parker, you know, Bird and stuff. Uh, I got into Oscar Peterson. I got into Bill Evans. Uh, didn't ever get into Keith Jarrett. I, I, I Now I'm kind of listening to Keith Jarrett, checking him out. I never really got him when it came out. I, uh, to me, that was kind of the ECM model, um, which I did love. Pat Metheny was a huge influence on me, too. Uh, in fact, I got... Um, but, um, and actually probably my biggest influences guitar player wise were guitar players that were my teachers. Uh, those were probably, but, but that's different than favorite, most influential and favorite, you know, um, yeah. So I, I'll come up with better questions, I guess. Or ones that can be answered like first guitarist you ever saw live. Or first concert you ever went to, or what's the most recent concert you've ever you went to? So, uh, boy, that's I, I'm trying to think. Okay, so what what I want to do is I want to limit you to just like these four notes. Actually, let's do five notes. Let's do a C, the first five notes of a C major scale. Beethoven could make that work. Make that work. Um, was, was it? Uh, uh, shoot. That's only five notes. time he actually leaves that five notes of... and that's a classic a a b a melody right <clears throat> basically it does the same melody twice and a new melody and a b melody and that was oftentimes how the beatles wrote songs early on especially later they changed um and today it's not quite done that way you can kind of <clears throat> with uh pop music 
and yeah, you can't really call the verse, pre-chorus, and chorus the A, and then it does it again, and then they, thus A, A, and then there's a bridge, B, because that would imply that they do another verse, pre-chorus, and chorus at the end. But if they go to a bridge and a pop song today, they'll often kick that right into the a chorus out, and they'll do choruses out. Um, sometimes songs will start with the chorus, um, but usually they don't. <clears throat> Oh, your first guitar guitarist concert was George Benson. I've never seen George Benson. You'd think I would have, but I don't, I don't go to a lot of concerts. They've always been expensive, so I've always been poor. So I didn't, you know, I never got in the habit of going to concerts. And then uh, I, I don't like sitting in the audience. I'd rather be on stage. Okay. Okay, so that's, so those are our, that's, we're, we're giving ourselves a limitation. All right. Now, one thing you can do. Um, so again, this is concerning soloing. When you're soloing, you can, if you're trying to come up with a good solo idea, and this can, you can do this live. You can do this on the fly if you're in a jam session. So again, my I'm, my context that I'm thinking most of you are going to find yourself in is jamming with another guitar player, where you're trading off. Uh, they take, uh, you know, they take a chorus or two, and then you take a chorus or two, and you just go back and forth, just so you can practice soloing. And part of it is practicing soloing in front of someone else, uh, so you, you de deal with your nerves a little bit. If the other person's a better guitar player, you're going to be like, uh, you know, you're going to be a little scared. But kind of once you get in the groove of things, you might not be that way that way for long. Um, and the other thing is, is you, you know, to to kind of get in that, to learn to get into that zone where you're developing an idea. You're coming up with an idea. Uh, you have to be in the zone to get an idea, and then in the zone is just this place where it's like. Music is flowing through you. That's the zone, and that's the dream. Okay, I always say this too. You can you can sing along with what you do. find an idea and again I put this I put this progression basically up on um, and how long did I say I made it 10 minutes right 22 to yeah I made it 10 minutes long um, so it's plenty of time to kind of get in the zone that's why I like jam tracks that are like 10 minutes long because it may take you the first five minutes to kind of get in that place where the music's starting to flow through you and and one of the ways that that opens up is when you get a scale set a set of notes that are in bounds that you can use, all right? And that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm giving you a scale set. Okay, so I, let me give you the fret numbers if you don't know what I'm playing. That's pretty crazy to be a teenager going to see George Benson. I would think that that's kind of mellow considering the music at the time, you know, you didn't go to see David Bowie or something, you know? I think I think it's actually really cool, but... Um, Oh, you have a oh, you have a George Benton guitar. I always wanted one of those. Uh, the, anytime I've ever played one, I went, man, these things are monsters. And my first two guitars were Ibanez, um, and my first guitar was an Ibanez 175 copy, uh, a lawsuit model. I still have it. My first electric. Okay, so I'm playing. I'm on the third string, fifth fret, and we're just going to be in fifth position, meaning our first finger is going to be assigned the fifth fret, our second finger is going to be assigned the sixth fret. Our third finger is going to be assigned any note on the seventh fret, and our pinky is going to be assigned any note on the on the eighth fret. If you want to do that little chromatic scale, just to kind of line up the finger fingering assignments, that's okay. But I'm playing fifth fret, then seventh fret, and then on the second string, I'm playing fifth fret, sixth fret, eighth fret. So it's five seven. Five six eight, and then backwards would be eight six five, and then and then uh, seven five, and that's you're playing the one two three four five in the key of C, and again Beethoven could write a great melody with just that. Um, you know, 
know, it's, it, chords are different, obviously. Um, we could try that. But here's one of the things you can do. You can find those five notes up an octave somewhere. Now, it's easy if you just add 12 frets and go up here. But that might not be possible on, on an acoustic guitar, but you might be able to do it here. That way you have some place to go that's higher if you want to develop, uh, kind of again, in, your, in the theme and variations of your melodic idea and you're doing variations, you can take it up an octave. And that just gives you another tool. Uh, another tool to 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 develop your 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 solo, your melody, or counter melody, or whatever it is that you're doing in the context. Again, I'm I'm envisioning most of you just jamming with another guitar player over the same progression. Um, and we talked about the different types of progressions over here, um, where you know you could do a jam. <laughs> I should do a, a jam track of that, just like an E minor or E7 or E9 jam or something like that. Um, uh, but another common one, like in soul music, would be a, a, a one four progression, like E to A. Kind of like knock on wood. Knock, knock, knock on wood. Um, that's that's a, would be an example of a vamp also, where it's just kind of a two chord progression, and and that one you could probably just blow in E E blues, and you, and you'd be totally fine in that progression. So I should I should do that. I should do a, a jam track that's just like E, e nine vamp or a, you know soul E nine to A seven kind of thing. So. Um, all right, so, um, all right, so let's, let me just solo over this progression a little bit. I'll, I'll keep it to those five notes. I'll probably go up the octave. You could go down the octave too, but again, the lower you get down, you, you're going to, the tension notes don't sound as good. And the tension notes, okay, the tension notes are notes that create some kind of tension that wants to be resolved. All right. So for example, over the C chord, if I play that F. F note, that F note wants to go down to E. Check it out. Right? It's, it's fine. It creates, and the interesting thing about that, let me just, do, I can even just vamp that first chord, okay? So, if I just vamp the C chord on this, the pedal. Uh, see, I gotta go here, I gotta go here, A. Um, I gotta control the sustain pedal. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna move the sustain pedal over a little bit and now it should sustain. Okay. Those tension notes can always be gone to and back from. Sorry, that's probably not the best <laughs> grammar. But you can go you can go to them and come back. Okay, so like this. Do that with me. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I'm playing, you can see over here, I'm playing the E note of the C chord, which is the chord we're playing over, but I'm going to that next note in the scale, which is the, the four, the F. And the four is, if I were to make a chord like that, um, it would be a C sus chord, which wants to resolve. It's like our D. D sus wants to resolve to D. Same thing with the C sus. So, but if you just go to that note and come back, it's just a melodic idea. But if I start on that note and sit on it, it's tension to me. Okay, do you see the difference there? So if we just go to it, it's just a melodic idea. If we start on it, 
or sit on it. So I, if I go, if I, okay, here's the difference. That F is just a melodic idea. But if I go, there's, there's tension, there's a rub. And that rub creates, like I said, the tension, a little bit of angst, a little bit of emotion that's like a neg, maybe on the negative side. And then when you resolve it, it's like, oh, <laughs> so that's kind of, I always say music is manipulation. It, you're really, you know, chords can totally, you know, you do a certain chord, you know, will will invoke a certain emotion. Um, yeah, there's mystery there. Uh, horror. Let's see, I can do horror. What did I do for it? <laughs> I don't know. Big Ben. Um, but the, uh, that t tension is a good thing, um, and, and can, and can help you to take your, you know, make a musical point. Um, I don't really think there's any tension in, maybe that note that he's playing an E over the, the G chord, um, and that's a six, and that's another one of the suspended notes, okay? So... We have two of them over the C chord here. The other one is the D note. So here's C. That's the two over the C. So key of C, we have C is one and then D is two. So again, if I just go to go C to D to C, that's a that's a melodic idea. If I sit on the D note, it creates a little bit of tension, not as much as the F note does. And, and that two could go up to the three or down to the one. It, go, it could go either way. It's technically a two-one suspension, but it can be resolved either way to the up or down. And that could be said for the four. You can totally resolve the F up to the G instead of the F to the E over that C chord. You could totally do something like that. Um, it doesn't give you the same satisfaction, right? The, the, the rub that you're getting when you play that E over the F is this. See, I'm playing that E string open with a third, uh, second string, sixth fret. And that, that's kind of like where it wants to go. And this works too, but it doesn't create the same kind of, you know, resolve and um, satisfaction. Okay, so those, are the, those would be notes that, that would rub. Now we have two more notes that we didn't include in our chunk of the C major scale. And those, I can add them now just for, let's do the whole 12, seven note scale, excuse me, seven note scale. Um, first, first string fifth fret is A and that's a sixth. Okay. And so we have over here, we have the C, E, G, right? Think of that C, E, G, the one, three, whoops, three, five, <laughs> no. The one, three, five, okay? So the suspen suspension of the one is the two, the suspension of the three is the four, and the suspension of the five is the six. We've talked about this before. Um, you can even do something like that. You can do all of those suspensions at once. Um, what's his name? Uh, Keith Richards does it all the time. Does, he'll do like a, a, a four six suspension when he does the you know, 
He does all those uh, bar chords when he tunes his guitar to open G. Takes off that bottom string. Uh, uh, those are all, he's just creating tension and then releasing, releasing it. Um, and so, so that A kind of wants to go down. And again, if I just go to the A, it's just a melodic idea. So do all of the suspensions with me. Play one, two, one, and then do three, four, three, and then five, six, five. You can even do it on one string. Not a bad way to see it because then you go to D. And melodic ideas or con concepts for a solo come from anywhere. And they could, you could start with someone. I could start with that. In fact, the whole song, I could just do messing around with. just I'm just going to suspensions for the most part over the each individual chords I'm so I'm actually thinking on at that moment I was thinking over the individual chords as they went by um, but you, you wouldn't necessarily have to do that okay so if we add up all the notes in these chords we end up with a C scale like I think every note yeah every note in the C scale is represented in those four chords so that means at some point every note in this scale is gonna work now the seventh that's the seventh fret of the first string. That's a B note. That's not a suspension, but it is an anticipatory tone. Um, it would be the the third of the five chord, and it wants it wants to go to C. But again, if you just went to it for a second, uh, it would be Bach, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. You guys aren't commenting much. Is anybody there? Is it? You've got a pretty good showing. Look, we got up to 33, 34. I wonder. Let me check the the tweet the Twitter thing and see if anybody actually like like that. Oh, yeah, I got a couple people there. Uh, oh yeah, a couple of people. Um, again, uh, the reason I have so many instruments behind, well, I always have instruments behind me. But I, I was literally like recording a melodic idea with this guitar, with the acoustic, with this pick, and then I changed pick and did weird picks. Um, and then, I mean, I have so many things. These... There's some duplicates here. Well, look, a, like a, uh, uh, what's that called? It's like made of, like a plate, um, shoot. So thumb, it's a thimble, but it's made out of, um, get the with, it's like stone. Uh, here's a, literally a stone pick. Here's a blue chip pick, it costs like $45. Not exactly sure why, but it does sound good strumming, I have to admit. Uh, bottle caps, I use bottle caps, believe it or not, for stuff. I've got all sorts of weird picks like the Pick Attack company that you see advertised on your Instagram if you follow any guitar players at all. And th these are actually pretty cool because they create like weird textures. Um, but yeah, so... Um, what are these called? Remember we used to try to use these for quarters in vending machines? Uh, rubber watches, this is from a, a Grolsch beer, which is actually used these for this. I should do a video on that. Uh, another one. 
But I, I've used them as a pick before. Here's what I, the pick I use mainly, but this is like a lot thicker. Uh, metal finger picks. This one's made out of bone. It's a bone pick from China. Kind of weird. Hope, hope it's not human bone. <laughs> oh, gee. You don't suppose? Nah. Nah. Uh, more weird pick attack things. So here's my mandolin pick from um, Wigan Picks. These are great picks. It's got a nice round tone to it. So yeah, I mean, and again, bottle just bottle caps. You're like, how do you use a bottle cap? Well, like, I don't even know what this one is. The best ones are the Pepsi ones. There's a lot of attack there. Uh, and on acoustic instruments, believe it or not, it kind of acts like a little bit of a speaker. So when you scrape the string, you can actually hear sound coming from this. It creates its own kind of acoustics. Um, anyway, another Wigan pick. This is a great bluegrass pick. So that's, I've got coins in there. I've got a, I've got a, was a sixpence that uh, Brian May used. Um, so, but now I'm just using my normal pick. Okay, uh, and this is a gravity pick. You can, if you, I think I have a link below to the gravity picks. You can get these at um, Sweetwater. They're five bucks a piece. They're not cheap, but. You know, here's the funny thing about expensive picks. Um, I don't, the ones I get by the gross, I tend to lose. <laughs> the ones that I spend $30 on or something, uh, those, yeah, those I don't lose. I, I keep tabs on them. Like this one I've had forever. This is another weekend one. This is, I like, this is good on electric too. It's super fast because it's so fat. It's like... fast because uh, it's so thick and rounded off it's almost like I don't know it's like playing with a coin too but um, uh, but these are uh, five bucks a piece and they I get the ones that are rough edges you can get the polished edges but I like the sound of the rough edges it gives you a little bit of a percussive element to every stroke which is kind of cool um, and I have rounded picks like this my old pick was like that this is the Dunlop and I have that up there too the Durlin 1.5 so I like pretty thick picks okay so I'm gonna go back to let's see let's say we do yeah um, go back to the one chord jam here do that with me so you're doing a one two one now do that's three four three Alexander Alexandra sorry now you go up here okay and that's the six five or five five six five five six five if you can sing along da -na -na, sing along with it ba -na -na. By yourself sing along <laughs> I got 35 people watching me sing okay now why sing well again I, I I've said this before one of the reasons you want to sing what you're playing sometimes or, or practice so you can do it all the time if you want um, is to is to try to get to the point where um, so initially when you do this da, 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 you're reacting to it you're copying it okay then you, now you but now you know that melody so now it's da 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 okay the goal is to get the point where you're in your head you go da 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 and you go that you create the melody in your head then you play it on the guitar that's where it gets that's where you can get into that zone and that's when i'm in the zone that's what's happening all right because with your with your hands and my hands have a lot more uh, dexterity and a lot more you know they can do my hands can do more because of the training your hands are limited and my all hands are limited my hands are limited too but as you, you know the more you learn the more you practice the more unlimited your hands get um but your brain is starting unlimited like 
Every melody you've ever heard in the world is probably stored in your brain, even as a baby, because you hear a song and you go, wow, that sounds familiar. It immediately creates kind of a deja vu effect. And you may have only heard that song once when you were 10 years old, but you remember it. Melodies, melodies tend to linger up there. Um, I always say, I always say at church, we're singing worship songs. I always say, you know, that, that our worship reverberates in heaven forever. So when we get to heaven, we'll hear the reverberations of every time we sang and every time everyone in the world sang. Now, there's a Bible verse that talks about uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will interpret your groanings. If you can't even speak, like you're in such pain or if you're crying or whatever, in, in you know, anguish, um, the Holy Spirit will interpret your groanings to God. Okay. Well, <laughs> I believe the Holy Spirit will also pitch correct our singing. <laughs> So when we get up there, it won't be like, ah, you know, no, it's going to be beautiful music. So that's my, that's not biblical. All right. This is, I'm not the Bible answer, man. This is, this is not biblical. It's just my thought on the matter. But, but these, these, uh, these melodic ideas, um, you can start and develop them. And, and, um, and if they're starting your head, like I said, there's, it's unlimited. It really is unlimited. Every note has an overtone harmonic series. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you don't have to, you can mumble. I mean, uh, Keith Jarrett mm, does that. A lot of musicians will, will mumble. Um, but the idea, again, is to get the point. Da, da, da. Now I'm da, da, da. Da, da, da. Now I've got ideas in my head that I can translate to the guitar. And that's a phenomenal signal path. That's a phenomenal neuro hand path that's going on that really the best musicians on sax, doesn't matter what instrument, that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're not like playing scales and finding melody. No, they're, they're, they're using the scales to play the melodies that they have in their head. So, um, again, so here we go, C chord. Let's do two one. So you go D to C. Hear the tension? You can go up to E too. Try the F. Ooh. Hear that tension? And if there's tension, it will be resolved if you go down or up to the next note in the scale. Now that's not true with a six. Let's go to the six. Go up two more frets here. Tenth fret, second string. If I go up to the next note, up to that B, it's not, it creates more tension. But if I go down, but it's beautiful tension though, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful tension? Now, here's the thing, here's what happens. So I'm gonna play the first two chords now. We're gonna to go C to G. Most times when you're soloing over something, it's not gonna be particularly complicated. Um, you're not gonna be doing bebop right away. Bebop, you know, you would have, you know, the... You're not going to be playing over stuff like that, probably. Um, and if you do, uh, good. <laughs> Have fun. Oh, thanks, Bruce. Um, the uh, so we're gonna we're gonna pick a note, and um, we're gonna play a note of, of the C triad, C, E, or G, and we're gonna listen to the chord change and see if we got tension or if we if it sounds good. Okay, there's tension. 
So play the C note. Hear that G? Ah, uh, see that resolves it. Or down. That B note resolves it. So C. Now sit on the C for a second. Okay. C. C B C. Sing it. C B. Na, la la. If you want. Or then up. La la. Okay. So what I'm doing there is I'm reacting to the chord change. I'm playing a note that works. It's obviously going to work on a C chord. It's a C note. Should work 100%. But. But when I get to the G chord, it didn't work. And so I'm like, well, okay, so what do I do now? Well, you, if a, if a note's not working, and we're, we're again, we're kind of assuming, well, it, this, you, it doesn't matter with a scenario. I, I was going to say we're assuming we're in one key. It doesn't matter. It does not matter what chord the next chord is. Um, if, it, if that note stops working, um, going up a half step or a whole step or down a half step or a whole step will solve the problem. Okay, that's that's just what I'm saying. Okay, so in this case we're in the same key, so we can know that it's going to be a D or a B. It's going to be the kind of the cure. Now, the reactive thing where I sat on the C and then went to B. That might only need to happen the first time. If it's the same progression over and over again, you shouldn't have to do that. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So I'm, basically what I'm saying is we intentionally hit a wrong note, that C note over the G chord. Creates a beautiful tension, and it may not be considered, you don't have to consider it a wrong note, but it does create a rub or a tension that you want to resolve or release. She's coming. See, now I know the G is coming, so I can go right to the note that works. But it doesn't mean you don't still use the wrong note to create the tension to create a resolution. Listen to what I'm going to do here. Melodically, I'm going to go D, C over the C. So I'm going, I'm playing the second to the third, I mean to the root. And then I'm playing the C over the G chord, which is technically playing the four, and I'm resolving down to the third, which is this B note, okay? So play this with me. And that's almost a little bit of a theme, isn't it? I created a melodic concept, a melodic idea where I'm going uh, tension, release, tension, release, and that's technically could be the theme. I could go the next, the next one could be B over the A minor chord, which would be the second. So check that out. So if I go, um, and then I'll just sit on the A. So this is our melody. This is our solo for now. And again, it's helpful to have it so you can play it up an octave, but I'm going to D, C, C, B, B, A, A. And the A is for the F chord. I can go one beat. So you're not sitting on sitting on that tension too long.
again, I'm, I'm using the, the, the suspension notes uh, to create some tension. So over the G, okay, we have the G chord. So if you were to, to add up all the suspension notes over the C chord, these, you, actually it's just a D minor chord, D minor triad. Um, so if I were to go assess the six, the, the two and the four, I end up with a D minor chord. With the G chord, if, you, if I sus the two, sus, oh yeah, sus the two, sus the four, sus the six, I end up with an A minor chord. So over the G chord, like if I was going, um, that technically creates tension you would think with all three of them it creates more tension it was like oh we got to resolve this bad boy but it actually is more beautiful than it is tense one is sometimes a little bit more tension because you hear most of the c chord and then you hear the one note that's not right but when you have a d minor over c to c it kind of is not weird okay so you guys are going off on something what are we talking about here Sorry, I'm going to take a little break. Union 5. Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. I've been playing for years, still not managed Tornado Souls by Megadeth. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's the interesting thing. Let's see. I don't even know that song. I probably do, but I, don't know, I probably don't. I really don't know the Megadeth catalog. Um uh, Oh, that one paid for their houses. <laughs> um, now I gotta check it out. Crimes against music, hilarious. Yeah, if you hit a wrong note, it's jazz. No, what you do, if you hit a wrong note, do it again, then they'll think you did it on purpose. It's only a wrong, wrong note if you play it once. If you play it twice, it's not a wrong note. <laughs> So, and we haven't gotten into that, but we, you know, we could technically justify a C sharp in here if we had the right, you know, genre wise, you could probably justify anything in jazz. That's the beauty of jazz. Um, it just sounds like a lot of wrong notes. The heater is, why is the heater on? Well, it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of, uh, kind of that thing. So, um. So now this is the whole progression. And so you heard me soloing over that, but just taking a very simple concept of using notes rub, that rub, but resolving them. Um, and you might just, you don't need to think that, okay? I'm thinking that. Like right now when I'm trying to come up with something to give you to practice or to hear or a concept or a, a thematic, one th of a billion thematic ideas, one idea um, <clears throat> to build on, uh, the um, uh, the 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 thinking there is that it's just a building block that you can build a solo on, um, but it's not. This is not how you solo necessarily. Okay, um, and you could arrive at this without having to think about it. So now let me go to a rock sound, and and so I'm going to play it again. <laughs> jam with somebody if you were doing a jam again I'm imagining 90% of you when it comes to get an opportunity to solo on the guitar because I don't know how many of you are even interested in learning how to solo or improvise uh, but I'm imagining you just jamming with another guitar player okay that's okay because that's a perfect scenario to work something out like if you're hearing something you're like I, I I'm hearing something but I can't find it 
you know, you're, you should be patient with the person that's soloing and then they should be patient with you. And so you can kind of work things out, you know, it's like. Now, even right there, I was like, I, I landed on the E note, which is a total normal note to land on in the key of C or A minor, but it, I was over the G chord, so I immediately took it and resolved it. Okay, I'm like, I resolved it to the D note. Totally sounds like Neil Sh Neil Sean, and again, you can play one note. C the C doesn't quite work over the G because it wants to go to B. G note. It totally sounds like Journey. It's, it's, I mean, I'm just messing around, but it's like, oh, I want to work on, that's another thing. It's like, oh, okay, I'm, I want to work on doing a pentatonic snippet and sliding up to the next note and sliding down to the next note. So like some, hey, play this progression for me. And that's what jam tracks are for, but it's always fun to play with somebody else. But. You know, and practice your aim, you know, it's a, going to that B note. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, so uh, we're, we'll keep talking on soloing. Uh, I'm going to take off here in a minute, but um, we'll keep talking about soloing. And um, hopefully you're playing along with me a little bit and you're kind of getting some ideas on this. And... This jam track basically is up on the Discord. Uh, you can download it. I put up as an MP3 downloaded, or I think you can actually play. Hey, Aslan, what's going on? Um, uh, bu 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 um, the, uh, uh, I think you can play it. Just hit play on Discord. So you don't even need to download it. You can play the track through Discord. I don't make any money from it, so <laughs> just so you know. But I'm probably not going to put it up on... Um, uh, on uh, Discord, I mean, up, up on, uh, I already have, a, I think the pop, A minor pop one we did before is up there. I don't want to kind of dilute my jam tracks with too many silly ones um, uh, just because I, I, people will unsubscribe. So um, I, I don't know if anyone saw my new video last week. Did, did, um, oops, I live right now. I didn't put I'm live. I put I live right now. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. I wish I could edit. Um, 
yeah so what was that jam track uh, oh so the one let's see no get rid of that let's go to content newest content yeah oh the the ten dollar mute yeah that came out on the 23rd so yeah we talked about this um 800 views you know it's not great i'm telling you man i the youtube stuff is way down i mean it's so diluted with content there's so many people out there doing better content than me uh you know they're just spending more money and more time on it when they're anytime there's money in anything um generally the the there's or perceived money it's not even necessarily real money it's perceived money when people think people are getting rich off of uh YouTube or off of, you know, playing music for a living or whatever, then there's a lot of people flock to it. When, when people hear stories about how bands are getting, you know, $100 a year for their Spotify, that discourages like, eh, I think I'll get a, I'll go to school. <laughs> so it works both ways, but wow, nice, sunny and su wow, nice and warm. Yeah, we're, we're still cold here. It's, it's going to be cold for another 10 days or so. Uh, we're not even getting out of the 60s, but at night it's getting down to the 40s, which for LA is cold. It's been that way for months now. So I, I like it. I don't mind it. Um, I certainly like it better than 100 degrees. So um, and we, we'll have some days of 100 degrees. But usually by now, this time of year, we've already had a week of 90 or 100. So we'll, we'll get those odd weeks in February or January where it's like 95 and like, oh my gosh, really? Summer's here already. Uh, but yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, your content. <laughs> oh, you get a lot of views. Oh, that's good. I didn't know the time project. I, am I subscribed? Um, the time project. Let's see if I can find you. Is that what you're? channel's called? I'm looking for your avatar. I see a channel called The Time Project. Yeah, well, in Britain, rain, in, rain in England. Is not, although when we were in, in, in um, uh, we, we were in, um, where was it? Uh, we were in Scotland. It, it didn't rain at all on us. Like one morning it rained before we got up and out. So, uh, so what's your channel called? <laughs> Florida's going to be warm. Oh, the time project. Okay. The game, is it game playthroughs? I don't know if you can put a, you can post a link to it if you want. Is it music related? You can post a link to it if you want, if you haven't already. You probably already did it in Discord, so. Oh, the time profit. Why do I see, I see project, sorry, a profit, uh Profit. Oh, there you are. All right. Nice. Oh, very fun. Yeah, you do what you've got one. Yeah, you do. You get some good views. Interesting. Doctor Who. So you're doing reviews, basically breakdowns. That's fun. So you got a lot of fans like uh, science, science fiction. That's kind of your thing. I know uh, Joel, uh, um, shoot, uh, Joel and his brother uh, that did uh, Mystery Theater 3000. Um, I've known him since before he did that. Let's see. What's that? What's mystery? Mystery Science Theater. Joel Hodgson, Joel Hodgson and his brother, what's his brother's name? I can't think of it. Uh, Joel Hodgson was a stand-up comedian and that's when I met him. He uh, dated a girl that was best friends with my friend's 
girlfriend so it's kind of one of those things and i remember going to see him at the ice house in pasadena when he was first starting out it was really funny and he went on he got on letterman and then letterman kind of gave him an open offer to come on his show every two weeks and then he went on i think at snl and snl offered him a job and then abc offered him a job to create a um a TV show and uh, he turned everything down. Uh, he kind of, he'd kind of created this persona for, uh, which I think he probably uses for mystery theater or mystery science theater 3000. Uh, he kind of created this persona, but he didn't really want to live that persona. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of comedians, their persona, I know that's true with Stephen Wright. They're, they're, their demeanor was based on their nerves. They were so nervous and Stephen Wright, it just kind of clicked. Um, and so when I seen Joel Hodgson, um, you could look him up. He's really hilarious. He's kind of a prop comic, but he's not smashing watermelons or anything like that. So, uh, but Joel Hodgson, uh, uh, will, you know, uh, he, he decided to become a toy maker. Like he moved back to Minneapolis and decided to start a company making toys. And then he started doing the Mystery Science Theater 3000 or something. And I think that was maybe a local cable show at first or I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Oh, the intro is you playing guitar. Well, that's cool. Everybody check it out. So yeah, I found it when I entered the Time Profit with no spaces. I found it right away. So and I'll subscribe. You got a new subscriber. I'm not going to turn the bell on though. But I will check it out. I, I'm trying. I don't think I've seen any of these movies that you review. <laughs> oh wait, here, wait. You've got more videos. No, that was it. Yeah, there's a few. Sixteen times the doctor carried a gun. <laughs> Man, did you actually go? You just are such a Doctor Who fan. Well, you're from England, so you you know you that would be a natural thing. My kids love Doctor Who. My son Alex looks like um, people thought he was. Matt, who's the Doctor Who? List of cast members here. Let's see. Uh, -bum -bum. No, the lead, not just random cast members. Um... Are you saying it right now? And I'm like, uh, okay. Um, not David Tennant. He was a great one, though, wasn't he? Oh, Matt Smith. Yeah, it was Matt. People thought my son Alex looked like Matt Smith. He actually plays it up sometimes. Like, he had his hair done that way, got the same glasses. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so that's why you did it. It's like, they kept saying, yeah, no, there's no gun, because there's no guns in, you know, guns are not, you can own a gun in England for hunting and stuff. But you know you have those uh, uh, you have those shows, or movies, or whatever that you know, action films that take place in England, and everybody's got guns. You know, like what? <laughs> but that's the movies. So, wow, we did pretty good. We got up to uh, we got up to thirty eight. Maybe that you maybe promoting it on uh, uh, what we call it before I go up is a good idea. Uh, Twitter. So I may do that again. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to take off. I got work I got to do, and um, uh, and I need to uh, I need to get my eyes off some screens for a minute because my eyes are kind of bugging out. So, um, oh, yeah, unless you're a farmer, right. And they're buying all the farms, too, so there's less and less farmers all the time in England, which is a drag. But, um, yep, yeah, thank you, Holly, for that. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hopefully you got something from this. Uh, we'll keep talking about it. Um, 
we might uh, start talking, uh, maybe I'll do a two chord vamp thing. And maybe that might be a, a fun little soul vamp thing to come up with for, uh, for a, a um, I could do a, um, a jam track. So um, kind of in the spirit of knock on wood or something like that. Okay. But anyway, God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you next Monday. Bye-bye.